Hello there friends, this is Dota News, we're here to create the best Dota News channel ever, here's what we cover in today's episode. New patch review, drama at the games of the future, OG kicked Yuragi, GPK and Seb are tied to match fixers and much more. Without further ado, let's get straight to it. Kicking off our new segment with a buzz, a young gun named Satanic has clinched the top spot in the European ladder, surpassing Watson and 23 Savage. So he's number one, big deal, just another no-lifer you might say. But let me tell you guys, this player is just 16 years old and he's already making waves with Spirit's academy team. He even managed to snatch a map from Team Spirit during one of the qualifiers. However, Malrin from Falcons backs to differ, arguing that Satanic lacks the potential to become a true pro. According to Malrin, becoming a formidable pro player requires enduring the same rigorous grind he did, starting from the bottom with weaker teams and working your way up. But personally, I believe this young talent is one to watch. As he matures and takes on bigger tournaments, he's bound to surprise us all. Moving on to some super cringe stuff, at Games of the Future one of the casters decided to post on his Telegram channel how things were set up, and well, he caught something pretty gross on one of his videos, a cockroach. This little bogger was running around his room, but here's the twist, the next day Didi, that's his name, was fired. The organizers said it was because of posting compromising material, and by the way, they didn't cover his return tickets home. And yeah, the tournament's broadcast is a mess as well. The TO primarily invited Eastern European streamers who have never cast tournaments before, and then they made the studio look like a tiny cardboard box. This place is a spitting image of houses we built as kids with our friends, you know, but painted with sponsor logos and bright colors. It's baffling how they could invest so much money into the tournament prize pool and not provide a decent studio for their staff. And speaking of the games of the future, you see, Ramses seems to be utterly dropping to the tier 2 level. Now he can't even compete with weaker teams, getting knocked out by Geek Fam in the first map within 17 minutes says a lot. Losing to Extreme Gaming? I can understand, but losing two maps to a tier 2 Southeast Asian team is just unacceptable, no offense Geek Fam. And you know what, something tells me that Ramses might soon put his career on hold. It's been a long time since he had any good results and his new stack looks more like a team of match fixers. And by the way, speaking of match fixers, see, in the Eastern European Dota community there's this guy, Sensibility. He's known as a mafia dude, setting up fixed matches and all that, pretty famous on the tier 2 scene. And now he's in deep trouble, and I will explain why. Previously he was threatening many players, making them lose matches, blackmailing them and whatnot. He's hated by the entire Dota community, and now karma came back, some might say. Apparently he owes a huge amount of money to some guy which he's unable to repay. In a bid to avoid jail, Sensibility went rogue and started threatening people even more, asking for money. He also said that GPK is involved and Seb's name was also unnecessarily dragged into this mess. How are they related? I have no idea, this is all rumors for now. Maybe he's just cornered and tries to attract attention or something, I don't know. But guys, if you want me to do a video on Eastern European match fixing mafia, just spam in the comments below. If we see that you're really interested, we might cover it separately. Now, let's see how the teams performed at the games of the future. The lineups are quite dim, to be honest, since many strong teams missed this one, leaving tier 2 teams and the Chinese monsters to battle for 1 million dollars. As expected, all Eastern European teams were eliminated from the groups right from the start. However, the Chinese region delivered, along with PSG Quest, who took two maps from Azure Ray. You can see the group results and the playoffs bracket on your screens. And next, official roster changes. In a surprising move, OG decided to reshuffle, with the spotlight falling on the team's carry, Yuragi. The reasons behind this decision were not disclosed. As usual, OG expressed their gratitude for his contributions and wished him good luck. Still, there's a big question, who would take over? So a few hours later, OG announced their new player, none other than Timado himself. And uh, I wouldn't call this a significant boost for them, but it's worth watching how they they will gel together right now ahead of the upcoming tournaments. 
Do you remember the team where Sumail last showed at least some results? Yeah, I mean Team Aster, and according to rumors, they disbanded their Dota roster. Aster simply realized that this business was far from profitable, and all the Chinese players who at least somehow knew how to play Dota were already signed by other teams. While assembling an international team would be pretty expensive, let's be honest. And yeah, Burning said that T is dead. Wait, what? Why T? Yeah, basically that's how they call Team Aster in China, because it sounds similar. And speaking about ex-pro players' misadventures, Koikwa recently told about how he received prize money from TI9. According to him, when the cash dropped to his account, his bank called him and asked if this money was tied to selling drugs. This is not basically surprising, imagine how your bank will react if you suddenly get 80k when you're unemployed. So here, the bank was this close to calling the police. Fortunately, everything was solved quickly and calmly. Yetro's favorite player, Ame, spoke about his return to the pro scene. The reason turned out to be quite simple, the Chinese player just got bored of staying at home. But guys, I have a feeling that his return to Dota after getting married wasn't just a coincidence. It all seems like he just wanted to escape from the domestic routine. And now, friends, let's discuss the upcoming Dream League. Finally, the groups have been revealed. You can see them on your screens. For example, Group B is quite straightforward, as you can see, with clear favorites in Spirit, Tundra, Liquid and Extreme Gaming. And yeah, also I want to note here that Aurora's Armel will miss the tournament, and his replacement hasn't been announced yet, but some people say that Lorenov might join the team. While not necessarily a boost, he can indeed fill this spot. By the way, since we're talking about Aurora, 23 Savage's price tag has been also revealed recently. The guys in top form right now holding a spot in the top three of the ladder. So the sum is a whooping million bucks. One huge org was eyeing him, and honestly, dumping that kind of cash for a young player who hasn't even snagged a major win yet seems weird to me, at least. What do you think, guys? And yeah, okay, let's move to group A. I think it's gonna be a real group of death. Every team has the potential to either advance or crash out. Let's evaluate the team's prospects together. As the Ray shown themselves quite formidable during the recent BB Dacia, and in my opinion they stand a good chance of advancing from the group, while BB Team and Virtus Pro are teams that can either deliver an outstanding performance or show a rather weak game. It's unclear how they have prepared for the tournament. GG and Falcons are as much of a favorites as the Ray, however, in my opinion teams could already be prepared for them and have devised strategies how to shut them down, because, for example, Falcons with their predictable drafts could easily be eliminated if the teams find a way to overcome the heroes they rely on. IG, Heroic and OG are teams we've rarely seen in action recently. OG has a new carry, and with him they could either shine in a new light or completely fade away. G2 IG is the dark horse here, because at Games of the Future they're showing some decent games, but in my opinion it's still not enough to advance from such a group. As for Heroic, we haven't seen them in real action yet, it will be interesting to watch their gameplay. And you, dear friends, feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments below or rate the teams from the Dream League groups. Who do you think will take the crown? And finally, guys, the long-awaited Dota 2 patch is here. And what did Valve change? Let's imagine. New Arcanas, new events. No, they added a whooping 3 damage to Kobolds. And, well, in reality, this update didn't change much, as usual. Just another lettered patch. Plus 1 armor here, minus 1 base damage there, you know. Valve just decided to fix some overpowered items like Mage Slayer and Disperser. As for the heroes, significant changes only affected Arc Warden and Doom along with Faceless Void, also Lion, a little. And basically that's where notable changes end, but hey, some good news also. The Dragon item, the skin for Ancients, is now permanent. Not like you will be able to use it just this year or once every 12 years, it's now always here. And yeah, there can't be a patch without bugs. Take Line, for example, whose mana drain range was adjusted on paper, but Valve forgot to change the range in the game itself. And how about mana cost for Diffusal Blade, which they only added in the patch notes? Dota still lacks this update in reality. Looks like we'll have to wait for a few more days for all the bugs to be fixed. 
And guys, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave your feedback in the comments below, because it's really important for me to improve by listening to you guys. Also hit that subscribe button to follow the best Dota 2 news channel. I'm not saying goodbye for a long time. See you soon.